Hey guys, JB. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Just wanted to make a quick video today. Just wanted to touch on a few things. Um, you know, we talk about different scenarios. SHTF, without rule of law. Um, you know, what assets, what preparations should you have and why should you have them? You know, we're, we're living in a country now that is highly divided, uh, a country that is becoming more chaotic, more violent. We're, we're living in a country now where you have to be careful with uh, the hat you're wearing, the shirt you're wearing, because you could be assaulted. We're living in a country where you have to be very careful what you're saying or what you're thinking because you could be assaulted. We're living in a country now where most states are broke. We're releasing criminals back onto the streets of America that should not be walking on the streets of America, mainly because all of our states, mainly most of our states are broken and we cannot afford to house these people. So we're releasing them and they are a danger to you and your family. And we talk about different assets that, that we should be acquiring right now for a shit hit the fan, for without rule of law, for an economic collapse, for an earthquake, um, and just for the times that we're seeing in America. Violence is starting to pick up. Um, we have 22 to 30 million illegal aliens in this country from all over the world, not knowing who they are, where they're from, what their intents or what their in intention is here in America. Um, we know that we have um, uh, we have uh, terrorist cells in America, we have cartels here in America, and we have a lot of people who just are not very nice. And so, you know, we talk about assets like owning a gun, a firearm, right? And learning how to use it and being well trained. We talk about um, things also, which I think are very important, like a trauma kit, right? With a tourniquet. You get stabbed, um, you get shot, and you're bleeding out. This could save your life. This and a tourniquet is going to save your life. Um, we talk about financial assets, gold and silver. I have to thank my friend John for sending me this one ounce pure silver bar. Thank you so much, John, for sending this out to me. Um, gold, silver, things like this. You know, people say that you can't eat this in a shit hit the fans uh, scenario. Uh, you won't be able to eat this. That's not true. There's going to be people out there that have enough food, but don't have enough silver and gold. There's people out there that have enough guns and ammo, but they don't have this. And they're willing to sell food. They're going to be willing to sell water. They're going to be willing to sell a gun or ammo or an automobile or whatever, um, a watch, whatever they, whatever they don't really need because they already have enough of or it serves no purpose to them, they're going to sell it. But... People will sell food, they will sell water because they have enough and they're gonna, they're gonna sell it for a hard asset, a monetary asset like silver or gold. So I do believe that you should have your own food and water uh, put away and not be dependent on somebody else. But if you ran out uh, and you had this, I guarantee you there's gonna be a seller out there that's gonna take this. Um, and you have to remember when the dust settles, okay, and the system starts back up, whether it's a reset it's a new currency, it's the old currency, whatever it may be, hard assets are gonna be in demand. Now, your can of beans and your, your bottled water, will, will, it's not gonna be as important as this when things start back up. You wanna be sitting in a position that you have monetary assets ready to go. Uh, there's a, so, so we have food, we have water, we have guns, we have ammo, we have gold, we have silver, uh, we have trauma kits, etc. There's another asset nobody ever talks about, and I want to talk about it with you. It is a well-trained home protection dog, specifically a KNPV European import. I highly recommend, if you have the means, the, the financial means to afford an animal like this, uh, I highly recommend that you purchase one of these because in an SHTF, uh, in a time of uh, without rule of law, you will have no regrets having a home protection dog, a well-trained protection dog watching your family, watching over you. So, uh, I was able to go out to my friend's uh, facility today, my good friend Jim, and we went out to Riverside, California to uh, watch some of the dogs get a workout in today. Not all of these dogs are KMPV dogs. Some of them are just homegrown dogs that... Um, Ha, ha, that are very well trained and they're, they're just really, really good dogs in, in, in themselves. But if you want the highest performance, you want a KMPV dog from Europe. Um, it is the Rolex 
of the canine world. These dogs are incredible. And if we're ever in a shit hit the fan time without rule of law, um, if, you're, if you're just uh, even on a regular day, if you're going somewhere taking a dog like this, it's, it's such an asset. Um, just think if you have a CCW, if you're carrying a weapon and you have a dog like this, the, you, you are forced to be reckoned with. Again, these dogs can smell better than you. They can hear better than you. They, they can detect things that a human cannot detect. If, if this dog has to step up and do its job and bite somebody, um, you have time to get your family out, out, out of a bad situation or get to a gun. So it allows you time to uh, get your family to safety. It allows you time to access a weapon. Um, and again, dogs can hear and smell better. Dog can start barking when somebody's hundreds of feet from your house, give you enough time and enough warning to prepare for uh, an assault. So again, uh, shot some nice video today. If you have the financial means to, to acquire a, uh, an animal like this, I highly recommend it. You would never regret it. The uh, only downfall is these dogs require attention they require maintenance you've got to continue the training these dogs need to be out they need to be working obedience they need to be working on their bites and they just need to be active these are high performance machines and if you have the time um, and the financial uh, ability then i highly recommend you do it i mean uh, it's great uh, camaraderie to be out training uh, at a class with, with an animal like this um, it's a great bond. It's a family member. There is no negative really to owning a dog uh, like this. It, everything about these animals is positive, except you're going to have to invest time and you've got to maintain the training. Shooting is a perishable skill. These dogs, it's the same way. Their skills diminish if they're not out there training at a high level. But if you're willing to put in, put in the time and the effort and the money, you're going to have one of the most important assets money can buy. So Jim, what what is the tie out doing? What's the exercise? What's the goal? The tie out basically frustrates the dog in drive. It gives us an excellent opportunity to really, really frustrate the dog by making passes. It's easy on the handler because they're not trying to restrain the dog. And then we can move in and present a very nice bite for the dogs and give them some back pressure to make sure they're biting and holding. We want the dog to bite full and hard and then let go nice and clean. And the back, the, having a back tight is a very good way to work towards that goal. So what are some of the um, assets uh, 
for a civilian to own a dog like this. Uh, we know that we're seeing a lot of violence occurring in America, chaos. We know that we that we have a very divided country. Um, what are some of the positives of owning a dog like this? Well, there's two types of people. There's people that enjoy having a working dog. They love the breed. They like coming out. They like the community. They like uh, meeting with their friends. So it's they more like so. So some of the people, it's camaraderie, a workout, exactly. a, week, a weekend workout. And then for other people, they actually have a need, or they want to make sure that they're protecting their family. It's very difficult to measure things that don't occur. But I can tell you, after doing this for 25 years, we've never had anyone with one of these dogs in the yard or house that's had a break in, or that's had a home invasion robbery, or anything like that, because a dog is a magnificent deterrent. And Jim, why don't we give everybody a quick background on you? Uh, 30 years, Riverside County Sheriff's Department, recently retired as a lieutenant. I was in charge of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department dog program. And you were and a canine officer? Prior to that, I was a handler for 10 years, yeah. And I've been involved in dog sport for 30. So what about cost? What are some of these dogs? I mean, we're looking at, what, 10, 12,000 for a KMPV dog right now? If you buy, If you buy a certified dog from Europe, you could spend anywhere from ten to fourteen thousand dollars if you uh, get a puppy uh, you could spend five hundred to twenty five hundred dollars but you know we've got people out here that got dogs off craigslist that were four hundred dollar dogs and <laughs> as long as it's the right dog you can you can make acceptable progress and if uh, if you're going to do something like this i believe it's imperative that you're always working the dogs yeah. you're only going to get out what you put in with the dogs yep you want to train daily a little bit of obedience and then get with a trainer in your area and uh, practice, practice, practice. Good boy! Good boy, Argus! Good boy! Okay, bad guy. Hands still. Hands up! No! No, Zardis! That dog is never going to let anything happen to that lady. So if you're a female, uh, older person, what an asset to have a dog like this. Uh, it's such a deterrent and uh, if anything does arise, a dog like that's going to step up and uh, he give his life for you. Yes. Oh, that's a good boy. That's 
Um, Yuri, he's an interesting dog. Um, some things that I learned from uh, some trainers that do the uh, KMVP, uh, uh, a judge and a decoy, um, came over from Holland area. That he comes from a Berry Two line, kind of a unique line, short hair. Dutch dog. Dutch dog, right? Um, yeah, in interesting line. Um, very strong bite. I guess uh, they had brought uh, Pitbull into the breed. Yeah. Uh, a number of generations back. As you can probably see in his head shape a little bit. Yeah. So he's been a he's been a good dog. He he has been. He's got um, some issues. He's he's uh, not real social, but he's not aggressive. So yeah. if you reached out to pet him, he'll just turn yeah. his head away. Yeah. But not aggressive. Um, so yeah. you have him as a as a home defense dog or oh, just defense. so yeah. so what are your what are your um thoughts on people owning a dog like this as a home defense dog especially with everything that's going on uh, in the country now um i think it's an asset i think it's a wonderful asset you know um, i'm not against firearms at all mm -hmm. um and those that say that firearms could be used against you or put in the wrong hands well obviously a dog can't mm -hmm. it acts as a deterrent system as yeah. you as you hear uh, criminals don't care for uh, for dogs more so than they're, they're worried more about a dog at a home than they are at a firearm. I would home. agree. People are scary, are more scared of a canine like this than a handgun. But I will say, um, if you are a gun owner, you have a gun and an animal like this, um, your 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 chances of something bad happening are minimal. I I absolutely agree. Um, when uh, neighbors, I'm sure the neighbors, when they see this stuff going on in our backyard, <laughs> we're the last place on the block they're gonna hit. Right. Well, uh, beautiful dog. Thank you, sir. You thank you. It. Beautiful. <laughs> 